I picked this up the other day. I just need to learn it right now. I don't know how to use it yet, but it's I tried it for a couple minutes and it's very fun, very cool. And this is what I'm gonna challenge Mike Boyd to. I wanna see if Mike Boyd can learn this. Hopefully I can learn it because if I can't, then that's kind of embarrassing, but it's, it's this thing, the Kendama. There's, there's quite a big Kendama community out there. And the first trick that I saw that I was like, that is really cool. It's called the Whirlwind. Now the Whirlwind, I don't know if this is a crazy trick. I don't know if it's even possible to do this in the amount of time that I have. But what the Whirlwind consists of is And that's what I'm going to challenge Mike Boyd to. So, this is to you, Mike Boyd. I challenge you to learn the whirlwind on the Kandama. Okay, so before I get too far ahead of myself, there are a few things you should know about the Kandama, you know, before you watch a full video on the Kandama. Uh, I'm going to play a clip from a video by George Marshall. It breaks down the parts of the Kandama really well and even goes into the history towards the end of the video. Now that we got that out of the way, we can go back to our regularly scheduled program. Hey, okay. So now I gotta get... I didn't plan to be practicing this today, but it's kind of a lot of fun. So I'm going to practice this today. Yeah, I'm gonna go for five spikes in a row. One. Two. I mean, I guess, I guess it's time to... Did you see? That's crazy. I, I guess we're ready for the trick. I mean, I'm not gonna do it here just because of the asphalt, but wow. I genuinely did not expect that. Cool. Ha. So, we got the spike down and then I even got the flip down. That's what I'm going to be practicing today. Just going to try to get that flip and maybe, maybe I'll try to flip this as well. We'll see. Hey, one. Maybe three in a row. Three in a row I think is pretty good. To say about that okay I got that three in a row but I I just want to go until I'm confident so I don't really have any goal right now 
But once I'm confident, that's when I'm moving on. I'm trying to flip this bad boy. But I just, just a little bit more. What I'm going to practice is just getting this in the air and then spinning this and making contact with this, I guess. I don't know. I don't expect to catch it. I just want to be able to catch this. So. What up? Cooper here from Sweets. Today I'm using a Prime Stripe Kandama and I'm going to teach you how to do a whirlwind. Before you start this tutorial, go look at the Earth Turn tutorial and the can flip tutorial. A whirlwind is basically those two tricks put together in one. I've never had something go from so fun to so frustrating so quick. So I'm gonna take a break. See what it looks like when I come back. I'm changing it up. I'm going to try to hold it down here because it seems easier. I don't, I don't know why I wanted to hold it up here, but I just it felt like I had more control. But I don't have enough torque to spin it around, and so with just like a quick flick of the wrist, this seems to make it every single time, and it feels a little more comfortable. So I'm gonna try. There it is. So I'm gonna practice these. And I think if I use this technique where I'm holding down at the base, then it'll be easier for me to just flick these real fast. So then I can, I can do both. I don't have to do all one motion, if that makes sense. So it's definitely easier to flick, flick and then do the can flip, even though it felt unnatural at first. I think that's the way to go. This is one of the most enjoyable skills I've tried to learn so far. But when you try something a thousand times over and over again and don't succeed, it's gonna get a little bit aggravating. Point, I'm beyond frustrated. I have been trying for the past half hour with good attempts. I feel like any attempt over the past half hour could have landed, but it, they're not. So now I'm starting to doubt myself. Now I'm starting to think, well, am I actually close or am I another six hours away? Am I going to have to do this for six more hours? I just didn't understand where the finish line was and that was driving me crazy. I can't believe I have to do that again. Okay. I guess we gotta get a second one. Let's go. Look at that. That's two. That can't. That means I know it. This skill is really fun. Now, fun to learn, not so much. 
But if you're just, you know, throwing it around, going cup to cup, maybe spike here and there, a couple easy tricks, it's really relaxing. I lose track of time every time I pick it up, and I think it's it, it's just something fun to have around. And my big tips are, and the first one is the biggest tip, you gotta use your knees. You're using this thing, catch with your knees, catch with your knees. When you use your knees, it just makes it easier to catch and also gives you more time to react to where the hole on the Tama is once you get there. Anyway, that's the biggest tip for the kendama is use your knees. Tip number two is specifically for the whirlwind, you're gonna to wanna to hold it down here. It gives you more torque when you're spinning the ken so you can catch it faster, it gives you more time to catch the tama. And also, it's not that hard to spin the tama from down here. Now I do find it easier to spin it like this. So if I'm just fooling around, I will hold it up here. But if I'm specifically going for a whirlwind, I have to hold it down here or else I'm not gonna get it. Tip number three is again gonna be specifically for the whirlwind and you need to do it in two motions. So when I first started, I wanted to grab it and throw it, throw it like this, this is what I was doing. I was throwing it all in one motion. So instead of flicking this around and then spinning this, I was just doing it both. And it just wasn't working out. It was too sporadic. You had no control. So if you do want to learn a whirlwind, you want to make sure you throw the tama first as that's spinning. You spin this really quick, which you can do because you're holding at the bottom, and then you catch it. Tip number four. This one kind of goes hand in hand with bending your knees, and this is specific to spike. So if you're trying to spike it, you want to bend your knees, and as it's coming around, as you're bending your knees, it gives you more time to spot this hole. So if you can get to the point where you don't have to look at this, and you can just watch this hole come around, then you know when to spike it. It makes it 10 times easier. 10 is a random number, but it makes it a lot easier. Now, this montage is gonna be a little bit different. I, in, instead of doing some upbeat montage, because this is such a relaxing skill, I decided to set a timer for one hour and just try a bunch of different tricks and just to see what I could land. And I even surprised myself a couple of times. So, enjoy. We got an hour until it gets dark. All right, timer's on.
that's an hour. Thanks for watching. Anyway, that's all I have. I hope you learned something. You probably didn't. More importantly, I hope you enjoyed, and it's been good having you.